the sharp tank. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. And today, they say some legends have, you know what I'm saying, creativeness woven in their DNA. And I feel like this man has it right here today, man. We got 20 years in the game, multi-platinum. Drummer boy, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I'm just trying to get, you know, I'm trying to get off, you might need me for a drop one day, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm trying to come hey, do the hey. drop like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> we got drummer boy in the building, ladies and gentlemen. What's man. happening? What's, what's going on, man, with a real great? What's going on with you, man? How you been? Man, I've been blessed. You've been blessed? To say the least, man. Was we you already out here in L.A. or did you uh, take a trip? I always like to know if y'all just coming in, because I know it's always an experience beforehand. I'm I'm just touching down, man. I've been stampeding through uh, Texas and Florida. I, I was able to go home for a few days in Georgia, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then, bam, flew straight out here. You know what I'm saying? So you being you Georgia native? No, I'm Memphis native. I'm born yeah. and raised from I Memphis. had to make sure you corrected it, man. You, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? You know what I'm, I'm, saying? I'm, talk I'm talking about, about it. home as far as, you know, where we reside. But for yeah. sure, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Born and raised, Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, a real, man. Black I, Haven. I don't know why Tennessee always comes back to me. Because, you know, man, like I said, I spent some time up in Tennessee. You know, it definitely got some water holes. I was just talking to my band, Brad, when it came about that not too long ago. It's yeah. definitely got some water holes, man. How's it been, man, being a Memphis native, man? How was it growing up, man, out there in that good old Memphis for you? Man, you Memphis, Memphis, Memphis the best thing that <laughs> I was involved with. I did yeah. play the drums. I, I played clarinet. I played, man, a lot of just different instruments, piano, yeah. you know, coming up. But, you know, Memphis, you got the church. You got the streets. You know what I'm saying? And then you just got the blues. Like, we the home of the blues. So, like, if you go on Beale Street or you going through, you know, anywhere, you it, the music resembled what we going through, which was pain and struggle, you know what I mean, and, and, and trying to make ends meet. So yeah. the, the blues is like the everything. real sound of Memphis. It's everything. Oh, yeah. And then that, 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 that pimping and the hustling, <laughs> and the gangster and all that kind of just was like, this is how we got to eat. I know a lot of good pimps came out of Memphis. Oh, yeah. A lot of good pimps oh, yeah. came out of Memphis. You know, oh, uh, I'm cool with, like, yeah, church. I'm cool with, you know, like, even Memphis Black in there, man. Shout out to Memphis mm -hmm. Black. You know, uh, Rico and all them, man. Shout you out know? to Memphis Black, man. Yeah. We did some work. Yeah, all them, you know what I'm saying? Some some real ones, man. You know, that really done came from back where you are from. And I love the culture. I love what y'all stand for. Like, people think they saw something in a, in a damn movie. That shit was just, in the us on flow, that shit was just a speck. Oh, yeah. Of what you really see. Coming up around there, man, you know, and Memphis culture. like a pot of gumbo, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And we we learn how to make the best out of what we got. Yeah. Type <laughs> Regardless <laughs> what you do, whether you hooping, whether you mind hustling or nine to five, still got to get gas. Might not have no car, got to get a ride, got the kids, got ooh, like it's, everybody got a struggle, everybody got a pain. You what know? was you doing before the music? Like before you really like took off into hooping, hooping, hooping. You know what I'm saying? Hooping and flipping, you know, uh, on the bikes, dirt bike trails, you know what I'm saying, through through the haven. Uh, you know, it was it was always just hooping. Like, I, I definitely, I had D1, D2 scholarships, you know what I'm saying? And I turned down my scholarships just because of how much money I was making coming out of high school. We ain't had a NIL at the time, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And, and opportunities to make money. So, you know, at the end of the day, I, ain't, I always thought I was going to hit like six, three, six, four. If I would have hit six three six four, I want for to be no point guard in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? But I'm winning dunk contests in the high school, <laughs> all kind of shit at five eleven. Like man, man, let me hit six three six four. Would have been a different story. You know what I'm saying? But outside of that, I got to be number one. This music shit, I know I'm gonna be number one in, and that's what that's what took my heart. Yeah. Collectively, like for you, when did you feel like? When did you not even feel like? But when did you start making beats? When did you start even around? Man. Other I say than instruments through insane wine. That's 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 you know. I say this too. My dad, friend in the orchestra. My dad was in the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. Played first chair clarinetist, and his friend Mike Scott played the bassoon. And Mike Scott introduced me to this 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 uh, software called Band in the Box. 
And then band in the box, you had all these different drum loops like salsa beats and waltz beats and yeah. uh, rock beat, pop beat, just all these drum loops. And then you could add your music, your sound and whatnot, and it'll tell you what key it is, you know, G minor, B major, whatever, whatever. So, I, you know, I read and write music for real. Like I arrange and compose. You know what I'm saying? Just from the orchestra side. So you understand notes. Absolutely. You I can understand read music notes. theory and appreciation. So that's 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 a whole nother tool and skill that I got through my father. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then bam, my it's brother different. give me that street and uh, the the M P C and the it take me to my first studio. It's a rap. Yeah. I felt like I was in a spaceship, like I fell in love, like damn bro, this this shit. Crazy, like, you know what I'm saying? The red lights, blue lights, yellow lights, you know what I'm saying? As a young all this already going in my head. And I'm like, damn, I, you know, I could play Beethoven, Bach, Sebastian, Mozart, woo, 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 but I want to write my own music. I ain't trying to be like you, Pop, you know what I'm saying? And I had a difficult way of expressing it. Damn, you almost had kind of like a, and this is a, this is even a compliment. You low key had like a Prince upbringing. Like where, he, you know, his dad sat down there and that's all he did was just play music of other people. Was one of the dopest pianoists, man, known to man back from where they was from. And Egypt Prince wanted to do something different. He was like, yeah, yeah I can do all that, but yeah. I want to be more. It, re you know? like, it remind me of if I was the son of Denzel Washington in Mo' <laughs> Better Blues. Right, right. Like if you seen the movie Mo' Better yeah. Blues, like, yeah. like the, the shit he was going through, but then he got a son. Mm. Who coming up, amazing musician. So you learning all of these different things, you know, from your father. At the same time, I had an older brother who was one of the top barbers in Memphis. My brother was cutting in Dynasty One. He cutting with the top, with the best on. He was cutting Paul and Juicy, Three Six Mafia hair. He cutting Bile and G hair. He cut, you know what I'm saying? So as a young came in, man, let me sweep hair for you. Orange Mountain just, Day by MJG. Yeah. Orange Mountain Day. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Let me just be around this shit, bro. Yeah. I'll sweep her up there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm playing my beats and woo woo. They laughing at this shit at first when I first started making beats. You know what I'm saying? Man, yo, Jay, man, ain't going on with this shit, man. Get this shit out of here, man. Yeah. Hell no, nah, man. You know what I'm saying? Man, hell no. Nah. Turn this shit, man. Turn the radio back on, fool. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's what just giving motivation and inspiration. You know, and then he's showing me certain, certain shit. He got me around the greats like Slice T, Paragon, Paragon. You know what I'm saying? Jazzy Faye. You know, I'm around the, it's the, your the brother ghost. That cut yeah, it. it is my brother in St. Wayne, R.I.P. You know what I'm saying? So it was through him that I got in, engaged and introduced in so many different relationships. Some of the top DJs, DJ Superman, uh, uh, DJ Just Born, you know what I'm saying? Howard Q, you know, a lot of guys that I got introduced through my older yeah. brother. And then I just started taking off with it. Taking off with this, bumping the Gotti. You know what I'm saying? Life. We got an inevitable entertainment days from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? We did Dan the whole life album between me, my producer Swizzo, and my brother Insane Wayne. It's like Yo got twelve it. tracks. Yo, Yo got, it. got it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And bam, you know, he was Lil Yo. He was dropping projects since ninety six. That's the first trap rapper I worked with. So that's why, you know, I, a lot of people forget about Gotti because, you know, in Memphis we got an underground scene. We don't really got no major labels in Memphis. You got selecto hits. You got like local independent, but you ain't got nothing major. Well, I feel like Yo Gotti. You know what I'm saying? Man, and it was man, an underground scene. Correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like Yo Gotti kind of birdmaned himself. He a goat now. Like, correct. I don't think it's the music side. Like, yeah, he could do music. Yeah, he could drop an album, but his business game is so savvy that I've never heard nobody that signed to his camp complain. You hear oh, yeah. niggas like complain around like, oh man, they ain't doing nothing for us over here. They ain't doing nothing for oh, us. Oh yeah, Gotti show you what he do. For Gotti this. was the first seen by himself off a deal that didn't go right. Once once TVT deal didn't go as planned, he bought himself back. Like, Who was this right. again? Say that one more time. TVT. TVT. You know what I'm saying? TVT yeah. Records, man. We did the single. Shout it. I got white. Shout it. Cheap. Cheap price. Mm. Shout it. You know what I'm saying? We've been talking about this. This. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And at at the time when they was talking about trap. And this and that, like you had to really be about what you was rapping about. You know what I'm saying? Between Tilt and Gotti, then it was Jeezy and Gucci. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just didn't hear about Gotti like that as you heard of Tilt having a major label and backing and putting a coin on it like trap music. Yeah. Like claiming like this this trap music. You, you know worked with you worked with T.I. in your early in his early days. From the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like, with, did you ever think he was gonna be where he's at today? When yeah, you first yeah. worked as soon with as him? I'm serious dropped. It, you know what I'm saying? It was like it, 
that put the that put the stamp on it that man he was yeah. official. You know what I'm saying? Like like once I'm serious, Joe, it's like and you know, we hearing this as it was being made. As I'm trying to be on the album. I met with Jeter several times, man. I'm playing beats, trying to get off beats or get on the album. I missed the first album. I missed the second album. I missed the third album. I missed the fourth album. I think Paper Trail was either the fifth or the sixth album. I'm on Paper Trail, four three uh four songs. My life, your entertainment, what up, what what's happening? Ready for whatever, and you ain't missing nothing. You know what I'm saying? So as a producer, you just got to keep coming. You was f with him when his hat was tipped to the side. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, you, so fresh out. You know what I'm saying? I was one of the first to prove visitors to go to the crib. You he don't do saying? it like that no more, but I remember what he did, boy. That was yeah. that was it, man. Tipping his hat, man, far to the side. But it feel good to come through for cats. And they, yeah. and they, and they even when they down, you can pick a nigga up. Yeah. Whatever they going through, ooh, 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 like yeah. that's the story, and we gonna tell that shit in this music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I've been able to do. Rocco, I'm gonna do me first song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Walker, no hands. You no hands. Was, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you feel like that solidified that man? Like, man, that no hands was first song I did with Ply, shot it. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? That joint was crazy. First, Out the gate. First swing king. First song I did with Drake, Money to Blow. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know what I'm saying? And even warm up records like Get Your Gangsta On for Jeezy and Look and Trap Niggas I did on Boys in the Hood album just evolving to Jeezy going, in the, you know, going uh, solo and dropping that first album. See, and, and to speak on them, right? When you were working with Boys in the Hood, did you ever get a did you ever get a sense that Jeezy or Gorilla Zoe were stars in that group? Gorilla Zoe wasn't in the group at first. It started with Jeezy, Big Duke, uh uh I'm just speaking Big, overall, uh, like where it's at today. You know what I'm saying? Like where the dust has settled. Man, it was Jody Breeze, mm. Jeezy, Gee, and and Big Duke. You know what I'm saying? So I'm talking about the original, and 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 it could have been something else. They yeah. they say Rick Ross and Ti could have been a, been a part of it and whatnot. But Block, shout out to Big Block. You know what I'm saying? They, he making this happen. So he he took the best out of what he could get. All right, I got Big Dude, I got Geek. All right, I got Jody Breeze and Jeezy. That's gonna that's gonna be what it is. And then bam, we go. Them boy got work. Them boy got fire. They out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I did two album songs on that project, but just being able to work with these cats and working with these guys. My manager was a manager for Jody Breeze. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They was moving around the world. You know what I'm saying? Like my manager, I'm just the upcoming producer trying to get on. Like, like man, you need to work with Jody Breeze. First song we did was Stacking Paper, featuring Slim Thug. So it's just them shots shooting in the gym and Jeezy go solo. <laughs> I end up doing standing ovation. This is my first platinum plaque. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. them relationships that build. Like every every swing, you might hit a ground ball. Yeah. As long as I got on base. You see what I'm saying? I want to I know because I want to ask you because you seem like you know a lot about Jeezy and maybe you can clarify, you can clear this up. Like, do you feel like BMF helped change Jeezy's persona and how he came out about music? Because BMF was about music. It really was a label. It really had... You know what I'm saying? Some real artists around. Do you feel like they were the ones that changed up like his old persona? Because when he first came out, nigga, he had on the Tims with the rolled up pant leg and, you know, bandana. He was kind of more on like a New York style. I feel like kind of changed up his whole his whole narrative. Man, Jesus was that period. Jesus was standing yeah. on, 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 on his own Lambos, having yeah. the money uh, in all the spots. And he, most importantly, he had to work. So you say he wasn't he put had on, the, he, he had made the himself. Vision. Yeah, he already made himself for sure. He was he was definitely, you know what I'm saying, evolving into one of the biggest things in Atlanta. Yeah. And he happened to be like, man, all right, bet. Bumping, a, bumping a, the family and, man, show them around the city. So everywhere he go, it, it really, like, applied pressure, yeah. if anything, because it was just like, man, every time you see, man, just so many people like that mobbing with, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. a, this music that's that's just so. It was like a new fresh energy in the streets. It was motivation. It was like inspiration for real. It was like man, the new God. 
So you, know you really feel like Jeezy was the one that turned the tables? On what? For just that whole situation, you just say it was just a whole different vibe. It was just a Jeezy whole different Jeezy was the feel. biggest thing coming out in the streets, period, yeah. of Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I remember this, but I was just, I was never, could I ever say that I was sitting there? You had to be there to know. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers have their speculation. A lot of people going to say what they want to say about it, but you had to kind of be in the mix to really know what was really going on. You know, so to hear from you, to say, you know, Jeezy was that guy, I'm sure it's going to speak volumes. Oh, yeah, for uh -huh. sure. You know you what I'm saying? And he, he, man, it's like, this show, you you in the city, man, and you got stuff on lock. You already got relationships with everybody, man. You finna, man, come on, I'll take you through here. Come on, bro, let, let's go through here. Man, whatever you, what y'all need, what y'all, I got y'all. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it became a bond. It became a relationship. You know what I'm saying? This a, this a. Question question for you. How was it working on the Thug Motivation 101 and did you know that the album was gonna change up the Atlanta rap scene? Man, that shit was like for me, I was in Stone Mountain at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh it's like 30, 35 minutes where's from the, where's Stone Mountain? About forty five minutes outside of Atlanta. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So bam. I had been, you know, Telling Jeezy, like, man, give me some acapellas, give me some acapellas. You know what I'm saying? I started making beats on acapellas. Mm. And, you know, I get like eight calls. One day I got like eight calls from Coach K, eight calls from from Jeezy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, I call Coach K back. He like, man, call Jeezy. So I call Jeezy back. He like, man, you still got this beat? And when I hear the beat, it was like your stomach drop because I knew I had sold the beat. But the business, me standing on business, like, bro, he was trying to get that beat. Man, I'll give you a hundred. He wanted that beat. Yeah, I'll give him a like, hundred. Nah, 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 and I'm nah. like, nah, <laughs> me standing on business, like, look, all right, give me them acapellas. I'm going to make something better. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? right, and right. And like, like I said, man, Jesus was the hottest thing in the street. Every producer wanted to be on that album. You know what I'm saying? Like he was that. not letting him get off that phone. He man, was not I was like, going. shit, where you at? I'm finna pull up. He like, I'm at Patchwork. So I had to yeah. literally pull up because, yeah. you know, he went through some 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 situations where music yeah. got leaked before yeah. and whatnot, you know, particularly on this Thug Motivation Project. So it was like, man, you, you got to pull up and get these vocals. So I pulled up the Patchwork. And um, I heard the song, and I was like, all right, bet. I shoot to the house where my equipment at, because, you know, at this time, we working on analog equipment and MPC 4000 and Rollins and Tritons and mix boards and all kinds of... A lot of, of you know, equipment. Yeah, you couldn't just hit export yeah. on the beat at that time. You had to really track that out and all that. So I took the acapellas back to the house, did, my, did a version, took it back to the studio. This is like 1 in the morning. He he listened to it. He like, ah, that ain't it. That ain't it. So I like, I bet. Shoot back to the crib. Do another version. He turning in Thug Motivation album in the morning. No bullshit. So bam, I, I shoot back to the motherfucking Stone Mountain. So yeah, this wasn't no that, wait two days. Yeah, I'm going no, like back to now. the house to make one right like now again. Now, burning gas like a <laughs> like this shit, you know, at this time, I ain't, I'm, like, I'm, 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 I'm grinding, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. bam, I shoot all the way back out there, bam, do, the, do another version. Yeah. Take the second version back to him. Man, now that's close. <laughs> That's close right there. So I like, all right. And this this like when I started researching and paying attention to artists, like I listened to Streets is watching mixtape that mm. was out at the time. I remember and listening, I listened to that to Trap one. or Die project. Both. And one thing I noticed, I was like, man, Jeezy loves some fucking horns. Them trumpets, them horns, that 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 triumphant. Yeah, it's loud when anthem. we're coming through. It's an you know anthem loud. Yeah, yeah, it's loud. You know what I'm saying? It's so loud. I'm like, All right, right. I gotta go to I gotta go back to that. You know what I'm saying? And when I went and did the third version, literally, them the first sounds that I did in standing ovation. Took that back. I'm on the album. He was he was always like, Man, you you come through with this shit, you that I'm fucking with you. And that's where the relationship really started because then I started putting up singles like Put On featuring Kanye and Lose My Mind featuring Plies. Lose My Mind. Me okay. And, ignorant. You know what I mean? Ignorant. So, so, like, for you to be on all these anthems, I feel like you have been a piece of his thriving ovation. You know what I'm saying? And where he's moved to now. You know, you've cut a lot of hits with that man. White girl. You know I keep that yeah. white girl. Yeah, like 
to know that these is all you're big you're just as big a part of it as he is you did you know what i'm saying so and like, little baby did the new version that you did that's how it go back to the that's all the but we gotta swing over to and we'll get back to other artists but just you'd even get over to like i feel like it's the rb pop side even working with usher Oh yeah, that's my Ursher. first Grammy, first two Grammys. Usher, Usher, baby. <laughs> for you to be able to even work with him, I mean, you got to tell us what that was like, man, for real. Nah, that was super dope, man. I worked with Usher a lot, uh, particularly at this. It was called Zach Studios at the time. Yeah. Shout out to Jimmy, um, but man, just working with Usher is, is energy. You know what I mean? And he he very particular on exactly what he want. You know what I'm saying? And he gives so many people an opportunity to be a part of his music. And it's just a, you know, it's it's, it's a super dope feeling just being able to deliver. You know what I'm saying? When somebody call your number, it's like getting in the game. You just, you know, Brian Michael Cox and Jermaine Dupree and, you know, you you in Atlanta with the greats, Lil John and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Jazzy okay. Faye. Yeah, and, you man, know what I'm all saying? Of, and, yeah, man, all uh, the uh, man it, it's, it's, it's so many legends in the city already so you you kind of gotta you know earn your spot you know what i'm saying and yeah. um you know usher gave me that opportunity shout out to drew castro as well man music house uh alec you know the engineers play a big role i think the engineers don't get enough spotlight but it was a lot of engineers in my life man particularly Can steve uh you know who who you know now they own in studios. You know what I'm saying? 11th Street Studios, LA, 11th Street Studios, Atlanta, like just elevating. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Who've been a part of our career and, and you know, might have found a yeah. session that we couldn't find. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You be looking for some shit. Could you thank your daddy today? Could I thank who? Thank your pops these days, like for what he put you on to. Because oh, think hey, about it. Yeah. Because think about it. It was all them things that you learned when you was young that you used in a lot of the stuff that you did to make a lot of these hits. Like you said, from like the horns and things, like you had to hear them horns to know how to use the horns. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you didn't care about it when you learned it when you was young, it's like, man, I'm not, I'm not tripping on that. That's good, I like knowing the orchestra. I like knowing yeah. the sounds, that's cool. But when you really look at it, you use it in your everyday craft yeah. to make a lot of hits. If you really look at it, if we really break it down. Oh uh, yeah. Right? Right or wrong? Yeah, no, it's 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 tools and skill sets. Yeah. That, you know what I'm saying? That you, you know, inherit. You know, yeah. however you Whether inherit. Whether you hate them or love them, right? Exactly. Like it's like learning something from your mama or your daddy. You'd be like, I hate that trait about him, but when you get older, you catch yourself doing the same thing. Absolutely. You know, so Absolutely. So you thankful for that, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because it, you know, iron sharp and iron and without it, it, that, it, what would it be? It turned me into a warrior. What would it be without it? Period. <laughs> if you really look at it, right? I got another one for you. Uh, you had a chance to work with the one and only Gangsta Boo. How was that? And do you have any fond memories of her? <sighs> God damn, man. Lola Mitchell. Uh, man, I got a lot of memories. That was my sister. That was my friend. Um, that was my, 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 man, that was my road dog. Like, she was rooting for me and cheering for me and, Introducing me to a lot of relationships. I met Big Boy. I met Andre 3000. Um, I met uh, Natina of the other group, uh, Black. Man, R.I.P. Man, we stayed at her house. Um, I slept on boot couch, man, numerous nights. Like, you know, not just having enough gas money to make it to Atlanta, play my music, get some placements, and make it back to Memphis. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't get no room. If I did get a room, it would be a Motel 6 or something. You know what I'm saying? Straight Put up. Just light to, on for you. Straight up. I, 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 like, like the Pastor Troy, make yeah. him get that money right beat. Yeah. I made that you in the Motel 6. You was with all that shit. Tracked out the beat in Pro Tools on my computer. I had an inbox. So you had to drop two sounds at a time. And I dropped all of the, uh, make them get that money right, right on my inbox, on my MP, on my uh, laptop. Took Pastor Troy the files, and he gave me $8,000 cash. 4000 a beat. You gave him two beats. Two beats. 
You know what I'm saying? Because my rate, I was getting 2500 a beat. And off you in the motherfucking Motel 6. Was this by choice or was this by force? You nah, know, you know I'm 18. I'm finna, I'm finna pay my insurance. I'm finna pay my car note. Yeah. I'm finna pay everything that I'm using to keep getting me back and forth to Atlanta. That's what they want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you gonna, I gotta, what you gonna I gotta, do with the I gotta, money? Yeah, I got to pay my bills, you know what I'm saying? And I yeah. still need gas money. I still got to eat. I still got to be clean, you know what I'm saying? These niggas are flexing for the Instagram together. today. You talking see about they saying? got 8,000. They're flexing with some fresh kicks on. Talking about, look at me, I'm balling. No, nah, <laughs> I went and got a crib in Stone Mountain, you know what, yeah. what I'm saying, for 1500 a month. And I brought, I had a three-bedroom, you know what I'm saying? So it was the biggest amount of space I could get if I go out far, you know what I'm saying, outside of Atlanta. And I brought my brother and Swizzo down here. You know what I'm saying? And bam, like, come on, bro, we got a house, we got a crib. And we finna drum squad. You know what I'm saying? Straight up, R.I.P., man, insane. Insane Wayne seemed like he was not only inspiration for you, but a mentor. He was very well involved in what you had going on. Do you carry his spirit with you, church, every day, like in how you move, even right now? Like to where you at, you feel like, so I feel like, man, shit, we got insane Wayne right here, right now. <laughs> He's speaking, man, you know, because when I looked yeah. on your, like the backlog on, you know, I'm looking like he was somebody you mentioned and you bring up a lot. And I was planning on bringing him up, but then you start bringing him up in the very, very beginning. And it let me know the impact that he made on your life. Oh, yeah. Can we get a little bit of, you know what I'm saying, a little bit back, backlog on insane Wayne and man, who he really that's, was that's... to you, for real. Insane Wayne was a was a that nigga was a poet. You know what I'm saying? He, the shit that he would say, it could convince anybody. Like, oh, this shit, like a uh, word. He was a he was a, a, a amazing storyteller. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he was always fly. He always had money in his pocket. He always had clean hair. He was he was you know. Neat, like 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 myself, like, like, like myself. My, I'm very neat with yeah. things. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a great storyteller, man. Yeah. You know, great. Like, like my nigga was like Money Mitch. Mm. You know what I mean? Like organizing shoes, this and that. Woo, woo. Like man, woo, 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 everything, hygiene, everything. You know what I'm saying? This the first nigga I wanted to walk, like talk, like be like, like just big bro. We 14 years apart. You know what I'm saying? So as I'm three, he's 17. You know what I'm saying? Everything I see him do, man, this nigga cutting hair, this nigga, man. Ooh, oh, I'm trying to, man, we at the arcades, and nigga love playing video games. Take a nigga to the arcade game, kick a nigga ass on Street Fighter, more to come back. We playing cruising, race car game. Just, you know, them, them the memories that I got just from the beginning. Going to Al's Golf Haven, man, in the in the Haven. We had Al's Golf Haven. We go up there, ride go karts. They got the, they got the arcade in there, John. You know what I'm saying? Young niggas, so riding a bike, I remember riding uh, bikes on, I'm, I was from uh, 4307 Bornshire in in the Haven, know my address. You know what I'm saying? In the corner of Nelly and Bornshire. Anybody in the Haven? Proud of that joint over yeah, there. That, we, that, that, that little, yeah, shit. that little plus sign right there. <laughs> Yo. hey. Yeah. One day we were riding bikes. And all my friends was out there. It was like eight, nine of my friends. All us had to, man, I had a clean ass red BMX bike with the white uh, uh, rims on that motherfucker, man. Clean. My brother got out the car. He was like, man, y'all niggas ain't doing shit. My brother probably was like 28. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He probably like maybe, I don't know, he's probably like 22, 23, somewhere around there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, that man jumped out the car. He's like, give me your bike right quick. That nigga jumped on my bike and popped a wheelie and was doing that motherfucker all the way up the hill. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a slant going up nearly. You know what I'm saying? And that shit, I'm talking about he riding that motherfucker all the way up the hill to where we couldn't even see him no more and went on, go, kept on going. Then he came racing that jump back. All my friends were like, damn, that nigga did like 20 mailboxes, bro. We'll count how many mailboxes you could do. That's some country shit. Yeah, no, nah, it was just like, how he many was mailboxes always, can you do? Yeah, never, how many I've mailboxes heard, can you do straight up? Sure, I've never heard no shit like that, so that's new. Like, the, yeah, how many mailboxes can you do? 
them the memories so I you had, look, bro. You say you look up to him for the small thing. Yeah, he he just was always like doing magic right in your face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He would do magic right in your face. Like, like bro, I'm talking about even with the music. Like, he would play on the piano. You know what I'm saying? It'd just be playing for hours and hours. And I'd be like, bro, like, what, what, what is going through your head? What is going through your, bro, we got to, I'd be like, man, put this on this drum loop. Put this on this drum loop. Put this on this drum loop. And, bro, we just, it was just like a, a, a chemistry. You know what I'm saying? Insane drummer. Like, bro, we had a studio. House of Blues, you know what I'm saying? That was the first studio that I was, that was like a part of. He had a rent. Okay, we got to pay this amount every month. We got to come up with this money. So we had artists coming through. We working on our own projects. We selling beats. We selling studio time. And that was like just another practice moment to, to learn the business. You know what I'm saying? And to understand how shit go, like every form and fashion of hustle, and turning that thousand into ten, that ten into twenty, woo, 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 and reinvesting in that new equipment, you know, new sounds, new energy, you know, perfecting a beat like like Dr. Dre say in Chronic, like taking your time to really perfect that shit, you know. And we get the mix from obviously, you know, motivation from Dr. Dre, but Slice, Slice T, this producer in Memphis, bro, he like, like the Dre of Memphis. You know what I'm saying? He taught everybody how to make geeks. You know what I'm saying? I remember my seeing him in there with Lil John. You know what I'm saying? And just watching him and Lil John. And Lil John like, okay, yeah, woo woo. And you know what I'm saying? John had the whole bus park right out, right on uh, Madison. And Lil John at his time where he went stupid crazy. Oh yeah, it's oh real. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he say he get you know the crunk from Memphis, crunk of Memphis turn, get crunk, get booked. You know what I'm saying? Like he used to get all his cups, like all them cups you used to see. Like, yeah, all them pimp cups, right? He'd do all this shit. He used to get that shit over there, man, from Miss Debbie. Miss Debbie himself, like, 73rd, man. He used to go get me Miss Debbie. Shout out to Miss Debbie. Miss Debbie made all them cups. Yes. She used to make all them Ms. shit. Debbie. So anything you see, even with the glasses, all that shit, Miss Debbie made all that shit, man. Shout out to her, man. She retired now. But, nigga, I, I still got cups from her, bro, that you'll never see again. Shit she made me years ago all the way up into... Probably a couple of years ago, three years ago, before she retired. That's crazy. Yeah, that's what she's from Paris Hilton. She made all that shit for all of them. Anybody ever seen with a cup, something that was like that, that was sparkly, that had some type of shine? She made all them joints. Yeah. Yeah, for that's sure. That's crazy, man. That nigga love them goddamn cups. He love them cups. Guess yeah, what, yeah. man? Miss Debbie, hey, Miss Debbie used to tax his ass for them motherfuckers, boy. She used to get all of them, but yeah. she made them all one of one, one of none. Yeah. You'll never see it again. However she felt about them, when she made them, she meant it. Yeah. And it was something that you would take pride into. That's what's up. <clears throat> if you can, I want to know, like, you know, just with Insane Wayne, like, what happened? Like, what? With the situation. Yeah, like, with the situation, why, you, you know? You know. Uh, man, you know, it just came down to an unfortunate situation where niggas talking shit, going back and forth, you know, challenging each other over the phone. You know what I'm saying? And man, they got to arguing at the store. My store manager called me like, man, hey, Jerome, they got the they got the guns out. I'm like, what? Man, shit. Before I could even hang up the phone and 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 you know what I'm saying, I hear pop, 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 pop. You know what I'm saying? And it it it, it was like shh. I shoot to the store, nigga. That shit like a nightmare. Like, I'm talking about the whole street of how me are closed. Red lights, ambulance, fire trucks. I'm talking about, I, I literally it had like to, a movie to you at the time. Like I had to park at the Bank of America across the street. Ooh, ooh. As I'm walking across the street, the ambulance with him pulling off. You know what I'm saying? And bam, the whole time, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck at the store with the folks trying to figure out what the fuck going on. You know what I'm saying? And then bam, the phone going crazy. Mom, pop, family, cousin, woo, business associate, everybody, woo, woo. Man, some headlines saying, damn, drum boy shot and killed. Man, why they throw you off in the mix? 
I'm talking about it was just all the niggas. Because y'all that close. Like, like, yeah, they know. People didn't know who was. They ain't know who was what. what, You showed up in the mix of it. You know what I'm saying? So it it was was, was just a lot going on, you know what I'm saying? I get it. But it was just, you know, it's some shit that, man, we could sit down and talk about. (laughs) Type shit. You know what I'm saying? My nigga wasn't no killer. My nigga wasn't. You know what I'm saying? That one, that one, no intention. Niggas just arguing. Niggas just egos. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, bam, all right. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it is what it is. Like shit, we ain't. It's, you know what I'm saying? Bro got self, uh, self defense. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. So wait, no, no, no. So you saying that, you know, the other person that was. Involved in the altercation, you know, when all was said and done, you say he got a self defense charge Correct. from it all. Correct. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know what I'm saying? It like, hey, hey, you know I feel you. It is I feel what it you. is. Just, it it just, just because of the sure. circumstances, like, you know what I'm saying? It was, it's just a unfortunate situation, bro. That's 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 the best way I can, you know what I'm saying? Relate that shit. Yeah. Straight up, like it's unfortunate. Well, I'm sure you miss Because the shit everything. we be arguing about, it yeah, ain't, it's, it's, it's nothing. You know what I'm the saying? The bullshit don't be it nothing, ain't, it bro. Ain't, I'm talking about it ain't no money, no bread involved, no. Ego. Come on, man. It's ego what in the way. Doing? Ego be in the way, bro. Me and you both know that. And I feel like, you know, everybody who's trying to have it, because I feel like they put us in that space, drummer boy, where it's like survival of the fittest. You know, you got to outshine the next nigga. You got to outgrind the next nigga. Niggas is bumping heads, bro. It's, it's gladiator it's, it's school. It's like, it's like, you know, it's every, gladiator every, school, homie. Every, 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 everybody, you know, got maybe an anger issue or something like that or, you know, things that we go through. And that's why it's really important we talk to each other. We support each other. We do, you know, grievance meetings. You know what I'm saying? Like you've been saying, I, I think uh, ATL Top 20 just did a, a Artist versus DJ, and we talk about our grievances and whatnot. Like we need more of that, bro. You know what I'm saying? To 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 really like understand each other. You know what I'm saying? And 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 prevent the the deaths and the murders for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Because again, like like the topic, the subject is 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 not even worth it. I gotta ask you, and I know you respect it. Like, are you? You know, you being familiar with the dark and like that evil sound and production that comes from Memphis, you know what I'm saying, with other producers and just even working with like Project Pat and people like that. Where do you feel like that? Do you feel like that's where that sort of sound come from? That, because them niggas been cutting it. Memphis got it. Like, nigga, hey, even 3 6, nigga, with the smoke clear. Like, it's some other shit that be really going on where y'all from that the people don't get to really see because there's no light in that shit. It's all darkness. Man, you know, it's 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 expression. Yeah. It's art. Oh, like a motherfucker. It's oh, art. Like a you motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And, and we just rapping about what we going through because this is what yeah. a nigga know. Yeah. You know, nigga ain't finna be fake and be rapping about some shit that ain't I ain't going through. Like this this what I know, this what I'm this this what I come from. Take it or leave it. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is what motivate me. You know what I'm saying? And it, and and it's like I, I could be doing what I'm rapping about, but I'm 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 in the booth now, so it's it's almost like you know, this the only person that understand what 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 you saying is the mic, and you got to just lock yourself in. And a lot of the people that I seen do that, man, they they been it's been very lucrative. So you don't believe in cap rap, you don't believe you didn't come from that era, you don't believe in the where niggas is capping about. They lies. Cause see, when I came up, I always felt like music was an expression of what you've been through. Now, you know, you got a lot of niggas telling you, I ain't never been through none of that shit. I don't know nothing about it. I just know it's a style. So you gotta rap about what you been through something. Everybody been through something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and a lot of the music, like you look at Lil Donald or look at man the songs that he made just for women or or, or going through this, or you got a purpose behind the song or a message. Behind the song, like, okay, this song for the people who, you know what I'm saying, whatever, you know what I'm saying, depression or whatever. Like, them them the songs that hit the deepest because it's real. Regardless what you're going through, it could be, man, jumping down a meadow. <laughs> it could be country boy, whatever. Like, bro, whatever you 
from whatever you represent, whatever story you got to tell, tell that and be true to that. You know, and I think it resonates as opposed to, you know, sometimes you got writers, which is, you know, you go, you, you want to have inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Or you might get be, be given a song like, hey, we want you to do this song. Yeah. I know this might be a, it's a very simple question. You know, I know it's for the, it's for people that they just be wanting to even know for somebody, your structure, how much is, how much have you ever gotten for selling a beat? Like how much is the most expensive beat you ever sold? Uh, I'll say like 50. 50. That's doing damn good. You know what I'm saying? That's doing damn good. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? That's like, doing damn good to me. If, 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 you it know, ain't even of, shitty, and it's hella fair. <laughs> man, I like that. Yeah, no, nah, I like I like to stay, you know, affordable, man. Because at the end of the day, in advance, affordable, nigga, fifty. Man, at, come at, on, no, nah, but you, you know, gotta be for I, real I, go, about I, go, it. I go, I go lower than that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. it's 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 got to be at the end of the day, it's an advance. Yeah. You want to be able to recoup that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the songs, man, I made millions off of. So I want to continue to do that. I want to, man, follow the the, yeah. the 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 formula behind that. You know what I'm saying? And if you do that, then you'll eat on the back end. You know what I mean? So it's about teaching the business and, and, and making sure that each client that I work with has that budget in place to be able to market it properly and push yeah. the song and so on and so forth. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it's a lot more to go into it than just how much you selling for the beat. So pretty much you're saying your price ain't the next nigga price. Pretty much. Like, don't try to go pushing around if I fuck with you and I got something that's for you that I feel like this is where we got, I can sell this to you for, hey, be cool with that. Don't just go say, hey, I'm just selling my beats for 10, 15,000. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's got to be a vibe. Yeah, it's got to be, you know, a vision. You know what I'm saying? As well as a budget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, how that budget was just yeah, lingering. Yeah, it's yeah. just hanging off the cliff. Yeah, yeah as well yeah. as it's got to be a vision for sure. Mm -hmm. Also, got to be a budget. Straight up. <laughs> Where is? What do you feel like is drummable? What do you feel like? Because you come from the old school game of, you know, making beats and just being around. I mean, shit. You've done things with people from. I mean, shit. We could say the the early two thousands is old school at this point all the way to the new school and working with people like NBA Youngboy, which we'll get into. But where do you feel like it stands today, like the industry? How do you look at it, man? I mean, you really, how you can say it because in all in all, you really don't got to fight in it because you don't put your voice out, you put your music out. So, or your, your beats, you know what I'm saying, your tracks. So people gonna buy them regardless. You're not really in that war, but just to hear your, you know, your philosophy to it. <sighs> Come on, take a breath. We here, uh, church. Come on, I want to know yeah. like your philosophy to what go on today, and just um, it's a lot of cats that's dope. You know what I'm saying? I think at the end of the day, it's a it's a form of expression. It's like basketball or the NFL or sports. We see young niggas coming in the league every year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. New teams getting built, new designs, new strategies, new plays. Um, I think with with the rules, just like in the NFL, they say that a lot of the rules have tended to fuck up the game. Yeah. Same goes with the music industry. With the technology and the, just the evolution from selling actual physical product, which we would sell as CDs. You remember that part? Tell us all a little bit about that part. What? Like an actual something you can put in your hand. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? A book, not something that I buy, and then maybe eight years later, man, what the shit did I bought on? They tried to compare Michael Jackson the other day to Taylor Swift. I said, come on, man. This is digital copies. And like loved and Taylor Swift, right? Like she up. But Michael Jackson, people had to walk in the store, wait in a line. Like you said, they had to go and get that physical copy, right? That physical copy that, that to me, that's the real shit. Of, that's, that's the real of music. It's when motherfucker had to really go get up, go wait in the line oh, yeah. for your shit to drop. Oh, yeah. I feel like it killed a lot of it for the artists. They were like when the TRL and all that shit stopped, where people can go shop their shit, people go buy the actual album. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, you know, actually going and getting that kill. And, and, and getting on the water, you know what I'm saying, and catching it <laughs> and gutting it, and woo, 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 it's gonna be more. Yeah, it's gonna be more into that, and that's gonna be a whole memory and experience within itself. And I think we missing that. 
just the actual experience. So, so you remember that war? You say oh, you remember that oh, yeah. war, like when you had to get it, it was hands-on combat. Oh, yeah. You was going to the local stores, you know what I'm saying? You was fighting for certain records and trying to get the, the record before it sold out and whatnot. You know, now, streaming, whatnot, like, you in, you, you you might not, you might change a card and forget that you changed the card and your subscription won't go through. Ooh, your, your account get canceled, you know what I'm saying, or something. Now, your whole catalog of all the music that you then bought froze. You know what I'm saying? As opposed yeah. to being able to... That's why vinyls are so... You know, I seen uh, in Japan, it was like this this vinyl store. It was like, like eight stories. But just of all these different vinyl records that you could listen to. You know what I'm saying? Like the vinyl record is still going to be like... Popular. Absolutely. It's, it's going to be valuable. Well, speaking of popular... A lot of a lot of Memphis style like funk music is becoming cr incredibly popular online, and you know becoming trending sounds on TikTok. Do you like the fact that the sounds is getting more popular, or do you feel like they're stealing the sound? Oh, uh, I, I I like the fact that you know the sound is Memphis sound right now is like one of the most sounds you hear today in trap music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's one of the most sampled. Yeah. Um, and and just our beat, our energy. You know, it's is like people want that shit. Is 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 it feels feel like that is. If it, it, it feels good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, man, we done been through so much going through the city itself and it's like if you can make it in Memphis, you know, you you are already a warrior. You you know what I'm saying? You are already a champion, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And uh, you know, you, you share that energy with the world and and hence throwing up the M Ed City I go. You know what I'm saying, and repping Memphis, and 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 just putting on for for the city, like literally. What you think about the John Morant shit? Want to speak on that? Uh, man, John, about man, that, like, John, my nigga, he going crazy. Uh, you know what I'm saying, incredible athlete. I hate he got injured. You know what I'm saying. Uh, we we rooting for Ja. We love him in the city. We support him in the city. We stand on that, man. We standing on business, man. Ja, one of the best in the business, man. Can I ask? We you wouldn't know, be who we honestly, are right now, identity true. wise. He is the face of the NBA still. You know what I'm saying? And, and people want to, you know, people want to see him come back. You know. I mean, I, I could be in speculation, but I'm gonna throw it out there. Like, did he really get hurt, or do you feel like they're just making him take a break? You know, nah, take a break. You can't, you they can't didn't like no him injury. shoot at the little section. And, like, to me, I felt like it's harmless what he did. But, you know, with him, people don't even understand, like, how rough Memphis can get. Everybody's riding with – oh, man, they, they got guns. Everybody, from your local white man in the snow who owned the, the local store on the corner to but you know somebody who's riding down the street in a pickup truck or somebody with a car on big rims. Everybody got something. But we speaking on loyalty, like you gonna be when you come from where you come from, yeah. you're still gonna be loyal to the to the ones who made it through the thick and thin with you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So who he loyal to, I'm I'm the same way with me and my people. So yeah. how can how I can't I I can't be the judge because yeah. I'm gonna stay loyal to me and mine. So if it yeah. if it if that hurt me, you know what I'm saying? Then so be it. You know what I'm saying? The injury that's something totally different. But just just speaking on. You know his home in. You know what I'm saying even the the, the 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 taunting on the court and all of that and the shooting yeah, and yeah. and the different incidents and whatnot. So you know all of that's just like man, this this my dog. And you know after so many incidents, it seemed like they finally parted their relationship. But mm. like, because it's been crazy, you know. It's just my dog. Here, like, yo, I gotta, and I know that show I dog. Gotta, like, but I'm just like fuck they. He gets hurt all of a sudden. Now he's out for some more some more games. I don't know if this is a you, ploy. You, you know we don't want to see that. We we got no, a losing we don't season. See Our that. record is horrible right now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like, man, you know now now young niggas might not want to go to the game as much or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And now they're back to doing something other. So you know we try to keep positive energy in the city. And man, at the end of the day, we don't have many outlets yeah. of positivity. You know what I'm saying? And the Memphis Grizzlies is like one of the only things we got. Somebody you know hold saying? on to. Yeah, so we gotta we gotta we gotta stand on that, man. We standing on that, man. <laughs> Memphis Grizzly, man. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Yeah. You been uh I see you been fucking with you been trying to like do you been trying to get into movie and film? 
and absolutely. try to do your thing. Absolutely. We got a few documentaries we working on. Obviously, the book, Behind the Hits, yes, uh, going which crazy. Which I also want to get into, yep. you know, at the, sure. at the end, so, you know, that message resonates. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. But, but the, man, uh, the documentary, working on those. And then, uh, of course, I've, I've done scores uh, for different movies, Blood First, um, super dope movie, street film, uh, some folks out of uh, Pittsburgh. You know what I'm saying? So, man, definitely check out Blood First. That's on Tubi. And I also uh, did Holla 2. You know what I'm saying? Scary movie. Uh, Tierra Marie was in that joint. Uh, Vanessa Bell Calloway. Omar Gooding. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's, it's dope it's doing great one. scores, doing jingles. Man, I did Walmart commercials. I did Shoe Carnival commercial shit you know they saying? don't even know like, oh, man, like when you be listening to way, yeah you listen to Walmart <laughs> shit licensing you don't even sync, know you're like damn I made another couple million just yeah. there and licensing and sync so yeah. you know it's, 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 it's always dope to be able to match the emotion of motion picture you know what I'm saying and, and, and telling the story cause you can see something of dialogue with no sound and as a producer at least me you know, it's, it's, it's certain moments where it's like, okay, I can I can feel what they're saying, and what they're saying has to match that sound, that that music. Good friend of mine, uh, shout out to Mark Late, that also runs the Soft White Underbelly. You know, fun fact about him, he used to shoot, like, all the Burger King commercials mm -hmm. and um, McDonald's and, you know, Budweiser. You see the yeah. sweat running down the side of the Budweiser commercial, man, Super Bowl. Yeah. He was the camera, like, the visual behind a lot of that through a lot of the years of our upbringings and us growing up and watching TV. So yeah. you never really know who stands behind something like that. Oh, yeah. I, man, so know, I grew up crazy. watching Isaac Hayes and yeah, obviously crazy. a big fan of Quincy Jones. Yeah. And um, just Sean seeing Quincy the Jones music. For real, that real shit. The music that he did, the theme songs that he did for intros for, for TV shows, you know, the Fred Sanford. Jingle. Man. Yeah, things right. like that, man. You know, those jingles, man. Real jingles. You know what I'm saying? It, just putting that, just the mindset to be, even be able to do that. And Isaac Hayes, yeah. just looking at you know what he done, what he's done as a producer. A lot of yeah. people know him as an artist, not even hip to him on the level of a producer and what he was writing and arranging and uh, producing and whatnot. So you know, I'm just a fan yeah. of the music. You know what I'm saying? I'm always appreciative of the ones before me and uh do my best do my best to, you know, deliver my best, you know what I'm saying, voice yeah. and, and contributions musically. You I see saying? you have fucked with some of the youngsters in the music game and there's one that sticks out to me because he always be in the tabloids. We always be talking about him, something that he got going on, his NBA young boy. And you know, you've gotten, you know, the pleasure to work with him. What was that experience like, you know, going and linking up with him on the music side, not even like an interview side, because we see him on the interviews or him making some comments, that's cool, but what was it like making some music with the man? Man, it was dope working with NBA, man. He, he's super dope energy. And man, I, I, can't, I hate all these RIPs, but man, it's, it's stories behind this shit and his memories, but RIP Young Greatness, because, uh, you know, he was in a situation with Birdman, and, you know, that's who invited me to the session. So Young Greatness was like, man, I got a session up here. I literally thought I was working with Young Greatness originally. Yeah. And then once I get to the studio, Birdman like, hey, I got I got NBA Young Boy coming through. So, you know, Bird, me, me and Bird fan, like, anything he needs, shit, all right. Young Greatness was super dope. He was just like, bro, I ain't tripping. This ain't my session. Y'all go ahead. So NBA young boy pull up, walk in the studio. He was like, play me something. You know what I'm saying? I played like two, three beats. Literally, he like pull that up. He wrote the whole song. You know what I'm saying? And shit, he put on the headphones, literally went through the whole song. He was like, you fucking with that shit? I listened to that shit. Woo, woo. And he played it loud. He was like, that's Birdman verse on the second verse. He was like, you know what I'm saying? This my shit. Woo, woo, woo. You know what I'm saying? And then this Birdman verse right here. And then Birdman came in the studio, listened to it. You know what I'm saying? He... Like, all right, everybody out the studio. You know what I'm saying? He got, oh, I like how he do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, straight hey, up, everybody, everybody out, out the, the studio. studio. <laughs> get your ass out of here. Yeah. I'm about to get ready. Hey, yeah, straight I got to get in the zone. Yeah. This shit got to mean something. Hell yeah, yeah. And when we came big <laughs> yeah. in that motherfucker, man, yeah. we popping. That shit was done. Next thing you know, they shot a video. And uh, it is what it is, man. That shit been going crazy. We you know, got to, man. Doing we doing numbers on YouTube. Goddamn. Hey, Church, you been a legend to this shit. 
you really been a pioneer to this shit, man. Like, I feel like the producers or, you know, people who've made music like you have, man, actually bring it. You got to bring a rhythm to something for a nigga to want to lay a, tra a bar to. Yeah. You know, we have to talk about your your new book, man, shit, Behind the Hits. You know, and I really want to, and you actually put your name on this one right here, man, you know. So to have your name on this one, like your real name with who you are as, you know, somebody who creates art. Like, what's this book mean to you? And what do you want people, what message do you want people to get out of what they read? Man, long story short, handle your business. Make sure your business in place. Because mm. it's 90% it's, it's business. So that's the shit you got to focus on. That's got to be the priority. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then the talent is the passion. That's what you're going to bet your heart on. You know what I'm saying? All of that type of, you know what I'm saying? Even with betting, you be like, man, be careful betting with your heart. You got to bet about the business. What you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's that same mentality, bro. Like, and, and once you master that shit and understand that the gift that you have, this gift, man, God gave it to everybody. Everybody got an opportunity to be something in some form or fashion. And once you understand that role and and really own in to that role and master that role, it's like, okay, then you start to be, then you start to become a triple threat. You know what I'm saying? Let me learn this skill set. Let me learn this skill set as well. Let me be able to be bilingual in business. You know what I'm saying? And doing, you know, other things by scaling businesses and hiring the right people and the so experts. So you say the music it's really all about business. Hell yeah, yeah. I always felt that way too because you'll hear the most trashest song on the radio, right? Yeah. But people be like, man, this this song is trash, but then they end up liking it. See, because that's the only thing you got to listen they to. They programmed you. They people was the only people that was actually doing the real business yeah. behind the music. It's, that's it's why It's 100 or 200,000 behind that yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, like. And they programmed you yeah. to like that motherfucker, and it's a rap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> This shit gets it's, deep. It's a wrap. Like, you can I, hear, I, really I, don't, know. I don't care if you hate this. Yeah. Everybody know this feeling, bro. When you hear a song, you be like, oh, man, change the channel. You know what I'm saying? You hear that song again. God damn, I hate this song. You know what I'm saying? And then one time you be in a club on a little drink. You know what I'm saying? Or you're a little tipsy, tipsy. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You been sipping on something. And you like, damn, okay. This motherfucker hit different. And you start singing this shit. Yeah, you start you know singing saying? that shit. And then it started. And it be a drummer boy like, beat. Can yeah. it be a drum boy? Man. It's a photo shoot, girl. It's a, what, hey, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just that 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 program. See, my my shit feel good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like every song, it's a feeling where I man, I, I I do my best to. I don't know. I, it's like I can't explain that shit, bro. I know when to play. I know what to play. You know how to play the beat. You know what I'm saying? Whether we gotta cook it up or got down, go through a plethora of different vibes and cadences, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I like challenging the artist to do some of the things I already got. If you already got all this shit, like Plies, he had a whole bunch of street shit. Goon this, goon that, goon this, goon that. I like, bet, let's, let's do something for the, you know what I'm saying? I told the nigga. Say it for the ladies. Let's yeah, do something let's do like something here. For the ladies, nigga, like, let's chill. I'm going to change this whole persona right now. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm like, bro, I, I, I used to tell every artist I work with, like, bro, when we work, I'm going to change your life. You know what I'm saying? So that was the last thing I told. Don't even rap, fucking nigga. Come on, you know let me saying? go over there, bitch. Right. And man, <laughs> shit, we did motherfucking uh, shawty. Shout out to Aaron Bay Shook. Shout out to Mike Karen, Atlantic Records. Plies was on there. Yeah, Plies. Plies went That's crazy. Plies, Plies went crazy. As soon as I seen little mama, told her I paid for it. Yeah. Then we went on a drink. What's in my tricky, pocket, tricky. dog? Big face hundreds. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That one Big. was cold, but he was tricking on that first one. He said, man, what you got? Hey, make sure you had this shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but it you, was a hit. But you can no, do it. it was a hit. You, you know what I'm saying? You can do it. Hey, that's hey, somebody for everybody. Hey, man, You went from 5,000 a show to 50,000 a show. <laughs> Going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Can't even knock So, it. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You going in, and you got to you got to be yourself. Like however you feel, man. That's what you finna represent. That's the story you got to tell, and man, that's 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 plies, bro. He finna take her everything, cater to you. Woo, woo, woo. It's undeniable. You know what I'm saying? Well, your music and how you've came about has been undeniable. We love having you here, man. I do. You know, and just even be able to kick it with you, man. Like just to chop it up with you and just hear. 
your side of things as just even a producer for me, like just beats and just bringing shit to different people because you've been a part of a lot of hits, man. You really have. And I just want to know, like, is there anybody else that you've been working with, something new you feel like about to come out, about to really fuck up, like like you said, about to break this shit? My nigga Looney going crazy. You know what I'm saying? My nigga Looney going crazy. He in Atlanta. He going stupid. Uh, Spark Dog, one of my artists out of Killeen, Texas, going stupid. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's, it's so many different artists, man. I'll be here all day. You know what I'm saying, name and artist, you know what I'm saying? But I, I think I got a incredible roster. I'm working with this one artist named KP out of Philly. We just dropped a project called uh, Pain in the Paper. This, this nigga is the truth when it comes to, like, visually telling the story. At the same yeah, time, rapping, yeah. he rapping his verses live while reenacting the, the moments. On his Instagram, check out his Instagram at it's just KP. I T S J U S T K P. It's just KP, man. That nigga the truth. You know, that's somebody that I feel like could be the next childish Gambino as far as how he did the Atlanta show. You know what I'm saying? Childish Gambino be on this shit. I ain't gonna lie. He got a whole different vibe, a whole different. He got a cult following. Yeah. And they fuck with him on a whole nother side of things. Yeah. No, nah, and KP like that. Like, niggas is like, man, nigga, that shit remind me of some Eminem shit mixed with some some new nigga gangster shit. Like, it's, it's, it's just incredible and like the memory of how he delivers shit, man. Check out the project, Pain in the Paper. Hey, I got one more for you before we get up out of here. Do you uh, what's your process when you make a beat? Are you using like the digital the digital audio workstation, or do you stick to the drum machine? So I'm on FL now. I'm on uh, MPC Live. Uh, we still got the Akai uh, software, and um, it's man just having fun. Sometimes I will just you know take chops that I got and whatnot, and then do the whole beat in Pro Tools. You know what I'm saying? I've been learning logic a little bit. That's so. why I take you to the back right now. Just your vibe. You just yeah, something like, gonna go I got down. Some like, sounds or whatever. Like we finna something gonna go shit. down. You got you know your own saying? like your own beat kit. Like did everybody nah, pick it's, up? It's, like it's up here. Up it's up here. Like it's it's like I can. Mm, mm, and that's how you feel. <laughs> like, it just be beats in the head. You know what I'm saying? Instantly, like, bro, like, I, I don't know. It's like anytime. So I, I I cherish that shit and try yeah. to use that vibe and that energy that I have for a positive reason. Would you make, like, a no oh. jumper anthem, like a beat? Uh, yeah, like a yeah. beat for the, like, an anthem man. for us. You know we got right a now. jumper boy beat? Yeah. I think we'd go. all like that. Like, just something that we could use. You yeah, know, something on, that like that shit. That's easy. Something that you can feel from like just your experience. We could do a session, whatever. That's easy to do a no jumper session. Nigga, we got all the shit in the back, man. Shit ain't nothing for us to hold it back. We yeah, got all the apples. Man, let's, and... let's, let's start the mixtapes, man. Hey. Let's start <laughs> some projects, man. Let me do the first project. Uh, what you think about that, Donnie? No jumper. We get drummer boy, drummer yeah, boy back on, in the man. back, man. Shit, give yeah. it pause, you know, <laughs> in the back. Hey. Oh yeah, man, a whole on, bunch man. of shit gonna go down, man. Come hey man, on, man, shit, brick baby yeah. over a drummer boy B gonna go something insane. Yeah, come on, let's do it. Hey, I think we got hey, I think we got us a few plays, man. It's hey, look, I always say your network is your net worth. You dig what I'm saying? And just the way we gonna network, church, trust me, I got some plays for us in the future. Absolutely. Let's get it. Let's you get know what it. Saying? Shout out to Memphis. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out to uh, the squad. You already know what time it is, man. Squeak. Uh, man, everybody who doing something positive, man. Salute. Keep keep going in the right direction, man. You still fucking with Gucci? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Come on, man. Gucci, Gucci. Chains, goddamn. Rocco. You know what I'm saying? Future. You know what I'm saying? And like, I, like My brothers is my brothers regardless, man. What what everybody go through, you know, I, I, I tried to bring. Joint? Man, come on, man. Come on. Let's talk about it. Got a future right. joint. We got yeah, a few more minutes. Come man, on, you, you got a future joint. I, don't, I forget the name. I got so much shit. Hey. That recipe, <laughs> yeah, man. The, the joint I did on my on my project, man. Future yeah. blessed me as well uh, on that Welcome to My City Volume Two. You know what I'm saying? That recipe featuring yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? Future, Dolph, R.I.P. R.I.P. Dolph. Classic. Check out the video YouTube channel Drum Squad TV. You know what I'm saying? One of the realest interviews and they're gonna drop this year. On, on no jumper We're right too now. Sharp for him. Hey, mate. Too sharp for him. One of the realest ones to ever drop this year. Already. 
I appreciate you. Yes, sir. For coming through and blessing us with some good game. Absolutely. Hey, man, whenever you want to slide through church, I love to have you back, man. And just even indulge back in on the conversation. Oh, yeah, because it's, it's a lot more. You know what I'm saying? We can go more in depth. You know what I'm saying? But we this, most definitely this can. Shit, this shit just is never ending, man. It's eternal water. I think you know that's what, what they be failing to realize sometimes. Like, how the real niggas, you never get it all in one session. I don't know. You got to always ending, bring it. It's a it's never, never ending, ending man. story, you know man. And <laughs> the real legends, they've been in the game 40, 50 years, man. Mind yeah. you, I've only been in 20. Yeah. I just turned 40. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, man, I'm, 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 I feel like this is the prime. You know what I'm saying? And the best yeah. is yet to come. Here I am is one of my favorites. Mind you, Rick Ross, Nelly. I got a lot of dollars I can spend on my own her. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's one of my favorites. You know what I'm saying? That drama but live shit comes. You know what I'm saying? We got a whole yeah. nother... Uh, you know what I mean? Elevation and growth. You know what I'm saying? And positivity, man. I just pray my young niggas can make it to see this age and this feeling. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We got to yeah. goddamn figure this shit out because it's bigger than that shit that you feeling at the moment and that mentality. You know what I'm saying? And whatever you going through, man, talk to somebody. If you need a big homie, man, I'm here. Reach out. DM me at Drummer Boy Fresh. This shit bigger than this music Drummer shit. Drummer Boy, man. you ever been caught like any of them rap beefs? Because, you know, your beats are very uh, well sought out. They're Hell popular. Nah. So, like, you know, where it be like you got two high-profile niggas, right, and they start to cut ties because it be a lot of problems in this game now to where niggas don't be fucking with certain niggas and they feel like their camp is their camp. Have you always stayed neutral? Or have you ever had to fall to a certain side? Oh, I got my own side. <laughs> you know what I'm okay. saying? I'm the side that you All have right, well, to hey. that you have to come through. <laughs> this the one side that's gonna actually do something positive for you. Yeah. Genuinely. Yeah. Genuinely. As okay. well as we're gonna do business and it's gonna be profitable for you. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no running off with the plug and this and that. Like, like we're gonna do good business and you're gonna make money off of this shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna elevate. Every time you do business with me, look at the numbers. Whoever whoever done spent money with me or ever bought a drummer boy beat, look at look at the numbers. You know you what I'm saying? Screaming out there at the cameras. They out there, man. They screaming so at the team. It's about right making profit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. being able to deliver and elevate yeah. and grow. You know what I'm saying? And, and continue to figure shit out. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna yeah. be ups, it's gonna be downs. You know what I'm saying? But my Dre and you know, you look at Timberland, you look at Swiss Beats, and you look at, man, I got my squad. I always been squad, drum squad. Niggas know what it is with me. We was walking 50 deep with drum squad shirts on, with Got Beat shirts on. You know what I'm saying? Marketing, flyers, stampeding through the barbershops and, 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 and nail salons and clubs. and You know what I'm saying? I'm waiting on artists at, at, at after their shows. I'm supporting their events. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro, drum boy, good to meet you, bro. Ooh, here go a beat CD. You know what I'm saying? I'm going through the thick and thin. I'm staying up to 5, 6 in the morning. A so beat I, CD. Listen to yeah. that. Like, giving niggas, man, demo tapes. Here, like, my here nigga, real go. promo. Yeah, Here's here a you real go. Promo. Yeah, you and like I get a call. Here? My number on that motherfucker, that's like how Rocco call. Or you want me to make you something new? Yeah. You feel like you know I got saying? a sound to make you something new? Hey, I feel yeah. that shit. So it's about your grind, your hustle, yeah. and the yeah. pain and the struggle and the shit that the nigga been through. You yeah. know what I'm saying? To get to where I'm at, nigga, that shit, man, that shit a lot of, you know what I'm saying? Pain, it's, it's, it's gumbo. It's some happy shit. It's some, ooh, it's like everything, bro. And you just fighting for this shit. Like, bro, can't none stop me, my nigga. Particularly your daddy being your biggest hater. You know what I mean? Should so we like, like your interview that? I'm like, man. Hey, man. You know, I'm, I'm hey. throwing hook uppercuts like motherfucking. Hey, Trouble Boy speaks on his daddy Lewis, being his nigga. biggest hater. What you think? <laughs> That'd be a yeah. cold title. Yeah. Trouble Boy speaks on his daddy being his biggest hater and more. But look, straight up, hey. we, we had a hundred thousand dollar bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who? Me and my daddy, cause like you know, I was I was my dad was in the orchestra, bro, and a lot of he you know, gave once, you a once, lot, once, church with listen, that. Listen, so listen, I ain't really had no babysitters, so the orchestra literally was my babysitter when I was with my daddy. You know what I'm saying? My mom and pop divorced when they had me, so anytime I'm with pop, he either in a rehearsal or he practicing. Like eighty percent of his life, he. <laughs> like straight up doing scales and all kind, of, bro. Six no, in the morning, and I shit, wake no, up to this uh, shit, bro. Yeah, it's like I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping, sleeping good, woo, woo, dreaming, and then in my dream, I'm hearing this shit, bro. You know what I mean? It's like I would hear that day in, day night, at at, at the end of the night. It built you, know you know what I'm saying? Nigga. 
So it was those things that just, you know, prepared a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Mentally. Fuck out you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you are who I'm talking to today because of that. You know but what I'm saying? But it's that patience from that. Being able to deal with that too. Yeah, that's crazy. Patience. That's mainly. So I, could, <laughs> so I can be in a room full of niggas. Sound, all, the, all these niggas talking in a, like no hands. When I made no hands, nigga, everybody was in a room celebrating. Gucci had just came home. You know what I'm saying? He booked the whole studio, bro. I did two songs for Gucci in the A room. I shoot to the B room where my, my equipment at. Bro, it's a room full of people in that motherfucker. Everybody. And I'm making a beat. You know what I'm saying? It just started. Just that sound alone gave it an, ooh, okay. Yeah. You've made some iconic mm. shit. Mm. So it's just For a sure. vibe, and it starts yeah. here from the spirit, from the energy. It's like, okay, yeah. if you like that many beats from a nigga, if you really go through behind the heads and see how many fucking songs that I done done that you can remember a moment to, it's got to be a spiritual connection. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be something deeper than just the beat. It's it's the nigga behind the shit, behind the heads. You raised a lot of niggas. Yeah. You don't even know. Like, you raised yeah. a lot of niggas to, like, what they even make their beats to sound like even today, whether they start freaking yeah. them or not. And to answer your question, working with different niggas who got beats and whatnot, like, bro, I ain't, I'm so inspirational. Like, man, I'm I'm trying to bring niggas together. I'm like Farrakhan. I stand in the middle of the wrath, nigga. I've been in the deepest of the trenches of the goddamn mud, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, it ain't nowhere I ain't been. You know what I'm saying? And saluted and congratulated and paid homage and figured been all out the way from here, all the way to shooting videos in Zone Six. Man, nigga. I've it been don't there. matter because so I, I know I'm, I wanna, I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna help. I wanna this see shit's and real. hear the stories and hear niggas mm -hmm. out. Cause man, ain't nobody listening to him. No, nigga, gotta hear no. niggas out, man. But when, when the nigga approach me and see me, man, what's up, John? Woo, woo. We take a picture, man. We can tap in. What's your Instagram? Da da da. This is my number. Call me, man. Nigga, hit me. You need me, nigga? Just. You need somebody to talk to, bro. Hit a nigga. If I ain't on an interview or got my phone down like that on silent or some shit like right now type shit, bro, I'm going to reach back or text back or, man, you send me a link to your YouTube or this or that, man, I'm going to goddamn listen. I'm going to fool. I'm going to, bro, respond back. Man, next time you in Atlanta, you don't know who the fuck, how the fuck, when the fuck, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> With this shit. You know what I'm saying? That's how I goddamn did money to blow. If I wasn't who I was and move how I move, I wouldn't have had money to blow. I wouldn't have had shawty. I wouldn't have had yeah. Rocco, I'ma do me. Yeah. I wouldn't have had motherfucking ride around, I'm getting it two chains. I wouldn't have had I put on for my city or motherfucking we popping or none of that shit if I wasn't moving and grooving and taking this shit, bro. I ain't never been signed to no label. I ain't never had no deal. I, ain't, I, I did all this shit on me. My squad, me, squeak. My manager, August, I seen him, man. That nigga called me one time, man. Shout out to Squeak, bro. He called me one time. That nigga said, uh, man, uh, Nooney just uh, hit me say he got a new artist. August, I seen him, da 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 da. Bro, we get in, I do a, a, a whole writer's camp, record, film that shit. This shit on my YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? Introducing August, I seen him, da 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 da. This the writer's camp. Bam, bam, boom. We was going through all kind of songs. First songs we did was, man, Fuck My Life and No Love. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to my dog Hood, Hood Boss from Dallas, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, man, August was like, man, we got to get Chris Brown on this Wait, joint. No Love, which was August Alcina, Chris Brown. No, future. no, no. August August Alcina, No Love was uh, August Alcina and Nicki Minaj. You know what I'm saying? Uh, That's the song I did. But I'm, I'm working so with August from the beginning. Because you, know you be what I'm saying? feeding through it. So I yeah. got to ask you. you yeah. like, no love and you just keep it moving. No love featuring Nicki Minaj. Everybody yeah. know no love, no love. So that, was, that was August 2nd yeah. single. But even on I Love This Shit, they were like, man, we got to get Chris Brown on the remix, man. We got to get Chris Brown. So bam, I called my nigga Hood Boss, make the play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's all about making connections, man. There's so many different fucking plays. Like a yeah. nigga made that a nigga don't even... Be, you know what I'm saying? This That's about, why I like to keep you accurate because you speed through one, you be like, Whoa. man, because I, 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 I make the plays, you know what I'm saying? As a producer, you got to be more than just a yes. beat maker. Yes. You got to be a make it happen yes. type nigga. Most definitely. Regardless what it is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, I need to get niggas food. Ooh, 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 what you want to eat? Gucci all the time, man. What you want to eat either? I'm getting him food or he getting me food. Yeah. Whoever whoever early or, you know what I'm saying? Bam, hey, give, me, give me such and such. 
I know what he like to eat. He know what I like to eat. You know what I'm saying? So it, yeah. it's that type of relationship with Gucci, with with Jeezy, or you know what I'm saying? Even with Dolphin and Gotti, I came up with Gotti. You know what I'm saying? It's like I always been the type of nigga, man. Once you get on and da da da, you good. And then I, I start with the next niggas that's on the bottom that's man trying to get on. I started with Dolph from the beginning. Shout out to Kim Fo Thug. G called me like, man, 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 is, you need to work with Dolph. He the next out the city. Anytime you say you the next out the city, I wanna help that you, that that particular person. You know what I'm saying? And and do the most I can for anything coming out of Memphis. Why wouldn't I? So I goddamn did everything I could for Dolph. I did uh flavors on Welcome to Dolph World. And from there, man, drama boy on the track. Yeah, I paid a lot for that. <laughs> Flavors. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But niggas was handling the business. Every nigga who handled the business and believed in himself and put the money on himself and kept putting money on radio and doing everything. He going to all the clubs. He 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 polishing the hands of all of the DJs and showing love and man, getting to his money and getting to his money. Them the type of niggas that's gonna win, bro. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be about your business and you gotta be about your hustle. Ain't gotta be about your, your, your discipline. Being able to transition from doing this shit all the time to maybe doing a little bit of this some of the time, still making my money. Well, okay, I do a little bit of this more of the time. You know what I'm saying? Until where I'm doing this all of the time because this is where I'm making my money. So it's it's a gradual focused transition that that every person gonna make, whether it's from corporate world or from the streets. To music, you know what I'm saying, and that's what you gotta figure out. Well, I appreciate you for just even coming. I can't wait to have you back, church. It don't, just it don't be that no beef, man. And like, yeah, Fuck just all even here. Y'all niggas yeah, was cool when I money. met y'all. Jeezy and yeah. Gucci were cool when it's, I met y'all. It's the money. So I see. I mean, okay, I met y'all then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. niggas were cool, so it's because money, y'all man. don't fuck with each other, I ain't got nothing to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't. That ain't. Y'all figure that shit out. But in the meantime, bro, can I get y'all on the same track? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, bro, can I? I'm trying to get both y'all niggas on the, you, know you know what I'm saying? Doing. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to bring this shit together, bro. Tennessee, Tila, I put Yo Gotti, uh, Criminal Man, Tila, uh, Slice T, Maru, brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, bro, I put, like, Haystack from Nashville, White Rapper. You know what I'm saying, bro? I'm unifying. Haystack was going crazy in Nashville at the time. And that was that, that was when we first got the Tennessee Titans. So we did an anthem for the Tennessee Titans on, on Double Dose, Tila album. That's an OG pimp. I'm a young nigga doing this shit. I'm on the hook. Tennessee, 23s, we keep it clean, man. Tennessee, in the land of goody, goody, Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just coming with that, that vibe, bro, if you don't speak up, you ain't going to be heard. It's I, mean, I got to be on the heard. track, bro. I got to be yeah. on the track, man. And they got to see me, man. All the <laughs> biggest rappers in the game, you see them because they rap. They vocal. Yeah. Lil Jon, Kanye, Dre, Swiss Beats. You know what I'm saying? They can go on and on. Manny Fresh. You know what I'm saying? The biggest producers, man, you see their face for real. They are artists, too. We the ones coming up with this shit. You know we got some shit to say. We got a motherfucking ideal, you know what I'm saying? Got a hook or a cadence or a vibe or whatnot, a pattern. Man, get niggas buku flows. Everybody who work with me know that. So, you know what I'm saying? Just value your your spirit. Never sell your soul and you'll be able to have that eternal water, bro. I swear to God, it's, it's that simple. Church, we about to go make a beat. In another room, man. We about to go yeah. throw you on something. <laughs> we about to catch us a drum yeah. boy B. He too Straight much up. in the zone. We right, gotta catch us one right. when yeah. a nigga be in the zone. Church, right. I appreciate you. I really salute for sliding through. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. And fucking with me, man. And just really. sitting down and just bringing some transparency to what's really going on. And you know, just your travels. Already, now you know anything I'm on. I want to you know motivate, inspire, encourage, uplift, enhance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Motivate and just provide a a a a a, a, a big brother. A safety net. Yeah, we need some That's OGs live. out here who who, yeah. who uplift them, man. You know it's what I'm saying? Enough. Shout out to fifteen hundred to nothing too, man. Fifteen hundred to nothing. Sound Academy. They doing amazing things. Rand, I'm proud of you, motherfucking Mars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All my yeah. guys, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Laurent. You know what I'm saying? And Brody. 
You know what I'm saying? All, all them guys, man, they incredible, man. It's it, that that's inspiration for me. Hey, church, we love you. We appreciate you for sliding through, man. Already. Hey, drum boy, ladies and gentlemen, the sharp tank, no jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. We going triple-double after triple-double, man. Hey, Donnie, shoot us out the motherfucking gym.